Thanks. Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we are looking at M Dining. Now on to the tutorial. Hey, can I get a dessert menu? Thanks. What to try first? The burger, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> Once you have installed M Dining via M Installer, it can be located in your transitions. Can be also located in your effects, as well as in your titles. In your titles, you'll see we have a lot of different options. We have intros, miscellaneous, overlay effects, placeholders, and a ton of typography. So why don't we just start here at the top if you skim over any of these, you will get a real-time preview as to how they may look on your footage. You can see we've got a lot of different drop zones and blurs going on, some really cool slides. So in this example, we are just going to use intro one. So to apply, simply click and drag into your timeline on top of your clips. You can re-time your title if you need to. And you can see that we've got some text that comes in over our drop zone and the drop zone changes and then it pops right back out. Now you can see that you have some on-screen controls for position, scale, and rotation. Now this is primarily affecting the text there, but you can see that it does affect the drop zone some as well. Then over in our inspector, we can do the same with content, position, scale, rotation, opacity, blend mode. We have the center element here. So of course, if you wanted to populate your drop zones with some footage or some still images, you can do so in those drop zones. In this example, we are gonna change our center element from drop zone to title background. And then you can see that any of the clips that are beneath that title are just going to change and they're populating. So really, really cool, really easy, a quick way to give some energy to your edit. Back over in our inspector, if you wanted to make changes to the text, you can do so here with top title, bottom title, as well as all of the adjustable parameters for that text. And then as we continue down, you can change your line. You can turn that on and off, change position, color, if you want to match branding, stuff like that. And then we can also have a background either on or off. We can do a width offset here for that footage. And if you wanted to populate a drop zone beneath, you would do so here. All right, moving on down our timeline, why don't we just take a look at some of the footage here that we filmed. It was a lot of fun. So why don't we move down to our miscellaneous tools. And again, you can see that if you just scrub over, you can get a real-time preview as to how those look. Now for this shot here, we used the rating in our miscellaneous. So I'm just going to click and drag that rating in on top of our clip. Go ahead and retime that. And then you can see that that just pops down really subtle, really clean, and then goes right back out with that animation. In our inspector, we have some on-screen controls for the different elements. We can spread these stars in and out, which is really neat. And then we can use this other tool here to change the stars. And even if you wanted to like animate that in or something, that'd be really cool. And then we have a master global on-screen control for position, scale, and rotation. Over in our inspector, animations in and out, all of our content parameters, and then again, our title parameters and the adjustable fonts and such there. Then beneath, we have a rating that we can toggle on and off, and we have the rating counter. So if we wanted, you know, one star, if we wanted six stars, it all works the same. Really nice. We have a rating progress bar here. That is just the same that adjusts that on-screen control there. But if you did want to set keyframes and animate that in, you would do so here. Then our X spread, and then we can change the different colors and such. We can turn on a background if we would like, and we could toggle that opacity if we wanted. And that would animate in as well. So it just kind of darkens. There you go. Animates in and then animates right back out. 
Really, really cool, really easy tool to use. All right, let's continue down our timeline here. And now we can come down to our overlay effects and we're gonna go over a couple of these because these are really, really useful. So the first overlay effect I would like to use is going to be the steam. So check this out. We've just got some really, really natural looking steam here. And you can see that in our shot, we do have some steam, but let's say that I really want that to be a stronger amount of steam going on. Well, simply click and drag your steam in on top. I'm going to bring that down to match. I'm going to go ahead in my animations in and out, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that on so it looks like it's steaming the whole time. And then over in our canvas, you can see where that steam is. And again, it just looks so, so natural. So why don't we bring our size of our steam down just a little bit and we're just gonna kinda keep it right there where that natural steam is happening. Then over in our inspector, we have all of the position and scale. We've got rotation, we have the blend mode. Then we have the steam mask scale that is going to be the same as our on-screen control there. Then we have steam color. And this is really important, especially if you are trying to match steam in your setting there. So we can use our color tool and we can do one of two options. We can just kind of eyeball and match our steam, which that already looks pretty much natural. Or we can use our selection tool and just kind of grab it and then just bring that lightness back up as desired so that it matches the steam that is already in the scene there. So you can see how it's just really kind of adding. It's a little bit extra just to make it visually exciting. All right, continuing down, we have another really cool shot here. And I would like to use my focus on this one in our overlay effects. So I'm going to click and drag onto our clip. Let's go ahead and re-time that. And then you can see again, we've got some on-screen controls and another on-screen control that is affecting that kind of blur and aberration mask. Over in our inspector, the usual animations in and out. Then you can see here we have bulge strength. So bringing that up and down is going to affect that bulge that is happening on that focus area. That obviously also is affecting our mask and our vignette blur. Moving down, we've got vignette blur that we can toggle on and off. We can change how intense we want that look. We can invert that blur. Then again, we have another bulge amount here that is affecting the actual footage, not just the masks, but that's more like an overall bulge. Really cool. Let's continue down. And I'm going to use another one of our overlay effects here, and that is going to be our light leaks. So again, scrubbing over, we can see how that looks. Let's click and drag this. And I'm going to drag this onto the entirety of all of these scenes here because I did use them, but let's get this first scene set up. So again, you can see some on-screen controls here for position and then scale and rotation. And then we have this other little on-screen control here, and that is affecting our light rays center. So as you can see where those light rays are coming from. Now, you see we've got some windows over here, so I actually want that to look as though it is coming kind of out of that window. And then we're going to move this over and just kind of move it around until it's starting to look cool. Maybe bring the scale down just a little bit and it just looks like it's kind of coming through that window over here. Over in our inspector, we have animations in and out, the position, scale, rotation. We have light blur. We have the hue and saturation options along with brightness. We have our light rays, blur, prism, levels, and noise. So let's just see how that is looking really cool. I mean, it is so subtle, but it is so, so pretty. I'm going to toggle that on and off just so you can see that subtle little difference 
that we add a little bit of light leaking color into our scene. And then I'm just going to do a blade cut on each of these sections here. So we've got the light leak there, and then we've got another one here. And if we wanted to move it, since the scene does do a little bit of a jump cut, you can see up here how that's affecting that shot, looking like it's coming right through that window. Really cool. We've got another option here. So now that light is kind of coming in. We can bring it in even more if we'd like. Coming through the window. But then we can bring the brightness down just a touch. Cool. So now our scene has that kind of cohesive light leaks look and it's not too in your face. It's just a really subtle kind of look. Really, really cool. You can move that around, find out where you like it and just kind of play around with it until it looks the way that you want. So the idea here is in our intro, I was trying to tell the story of we started with an establishing shot, then we move in and we see some things going on front of house, but then I wanted to immediately shift and see some of the, not necessarily the chaos, but just what goes on behind the scenes as people are sitting there and talking. So you see here we're at front of house, so I wanted to use our typography first in this instance. I'm going to go all the way down and I'm gonna to go to title one here, and I'm just going to drag this in on top. And I actually had it going on to the next clip. So our story is a glass clink and then boom, we've got the title there. And then I left it on and I let it animate out. And then we tell the other story of, okay, who is the head chef? Who is making all of this delicious food that these people are about to enjoy? So first, with our title, you can see again, on-screen control, position, scale, and rotation. Over in our inspector, all of the usual obvious parameters. And then we've got our title text here, so we can change that to our made-up name of this restaurant, Fortissimo. And then we can come down and we can change our title to Cuts and Cocktails. And then again, just your usual parameters. If you wanted to add shadow, anything like that, you can do so here. But we did, we had a jump cut so that that animates out. And I actually wanted to animate out a little bit quicker. And then we went into a placeholder so we can go back up and find our placeholders and we used placeholder two. So I'm just going to drag that in. We will bring it down to match our timing. So you can see Fortissimo and then we have that placeholder come in. So again, on screen controls over in our inspector, you can see here that we could add a drop zone if we would like, but since we do have the epic shot of the chef already standing there, we can just toggle that off. But if you wanted to just do that on like a black screen or have something beneath, and then maybe you only have a still image of the head chef, you would populate that with the drop zone here. And then additionally, all of your drop zone parameters are beneath, and then all of your title parameters are beneath. So really epic, Fortissimo, and then it animates out. We have our head chef looking epic, and then we went into the next bit of our video. All right, moving down just a couple more. Why don't we look at one of our lower thirds here? So we had lower third number 11 on this shot here. So I'm going to just pick that up, drag that in to our clip. And you can see that that animates in on the right side. No worries, we have our handy on-screen controls here. So if we wanted to maybe move that over to the left, you'll also notice that our titles are right aligned, but maybe I want them to be left aligned. So over in our inspector, super easy under your title option, go to your alignment and just go ahead and place those at left align or center align or whatever you would want. There we go. And then we can just global use those controls and boom, we can place it really quickly exactly where we want. And you'll notice we move in and then boom, here is our delicious food. Now, of course, that is not sausage and sauerkraut, so you can change that super quickly.
And there you go. So we've got our main lobster goes out and then boom. And then what we wanted to do is we filmed this shot and then we wanted to transition from the actual dish over to where the server was coming in and setting it down in front of me along with all of the other great goodness that they provided us. So we really appreciate that. We ate like kings when we filmed this. But let's go over to our transitions. So we've got M Dining and transitions and you can see that we've got several really cool we've got blurred shift we have flame which is awesome we're going to show you in just a second the overburned we have a zoom slide up and then a zoom blur in so i just kept it really simple and i used the zoom blur in so we're just going to click that drag that in between our two clips and then we just kind of boom like zoom into the dish and there you go super simple not a lot in regard to parameters on this one. We just have the blur amount. So really nice, really easy. And then on this other shot, we just had him cook up some flames for us so we could use this transition. So let's go over and we can grab our flame transition. And I'm going to bring that down just a little bit so it's quick. And then I'm going to use my arrow keys and boom, we just had that flame come in into the next scene. So really, really neat. And the last thing I'd like to look at are going to be the effects. We have some split screens here. And again, as you skim over each of these, you can see a real-time preview of how they can affect your footage. So we have these three clips stacked on top of each other. And I would like to use some of these split screens. So why don't we use split screen number two on this top clip here. So to apply, simply click and drag onto your clip. You can see that it is revealing the clip beneath. We do have some on-screen controls where we can very quickly set the position, the scale and rotation if we would like. Over in our inspector, we have the animations in and out as well as the speed and then we have a split type we can have either top or bottom there and then we have content position scale and rotation parameters as well on this next clip i'd like to use split screen number three so i'm going to click and drag and then you can see how that is affecting our clip and this one moves a lot more independent it is just going to kind of scale and frame that down so what i'm actually going to do is just move this entire clip over to the right really quickly. And again, our parameters are very straight to the point, animations in and out, along with the speed and then position scale, rotation and drop shadow. And I'm going to apply split screen at number three also to my bottom clip here and very quickly use my on-screen controls to set that right there so that now we have all three clips working together very beautifully and you can see that they all animate in really nicely together so really cool and then they just animate right back out and that is about it from me thank you so much for checking out this tutorial on m dining now available from motionvfx.com be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one